If you need an easy way to refresh your prep memory before a session, or you're a beginner who is running these adventures for the first time, or you're just hoping to be inspired and rework some of this material for your homebrew world, I hope to cater for all with this series. I'm Chris, let's prep. The Lost Band of Fandelva, the first few chapters, originally came with this box. Mine has totally seen better days, but I will hope to use some of my notes and maybe maps to help me explain to you about this book. The adventure in here is not a carbon copy, it's been updated. There are added villains and hints at what comes in the new continuation which they added. This is one of the maps that comes with the Shattered Obelisk. A small map of Phandalin, but the Essentials Kit, for a quite a cheap price, gives this bigger map. So I'm presuming that you own the book as well, I'm not going to read it word for word or anything. Your players might find it useful to tie their characters in with adventure hooks or character backgrounds explaining why they would come to Phandalin or be in that area. The adventure starts in Neverwinter, a massive city, and it's a wagon that you escort to Phandalin. So let's just mention a criminal background here. You're wanted for crimes in Neverwinter. So you're basically lying low in a very quiet village. You can just make it up. I mean, surely you can make up better than that. You know, each person, each player should be able to say, I don't know, I had a relative in there, or I don't know anyone around there. I'm just coming to relax. Or maybe everyone's just like, I'm just coming looking for work. But the easiest thing is just to say that Gundren Rockseeker gave you this job, and that's why you're doing it. Personally, when I run it, I start in Neverwinter. It doesn't have to be Neverwinter. But I start at a place where you're meeting Gundren Rockseeker and he's saying to, the, to each individual person whether they know each other or not Oh, you've come about the job, I advertised. Come into this back room. Go into the back room, they meet Sildar Hallwinter. Ultimately, they're getting ten gold to escort a wagon from Neverwinter down the high road down to Phandalin. Gundren will probably let slip that him and his brothers have found something big and he's going to travel ahead with Sildar and meet you when you drop off this wagon. The wagon has just food and bits and bats for a shop called Bath and Provisions. Sacks of flour, pork, ale, shovels, picks, crowbars, lanterns. It's worth about 100 gold pieces. Now a gold in d and is technically, I've read, about a month's wage, but... Personally, I don't bother with anything less than the gold. Players count the golds, and if I say copper or silver, they just have it. Like loose change that you have in your pocket anyway for parking or whatever. The characters are the coloured circles for now, just to represent players. Their wagon comes along, they're escorting it. And up ahead are goblins in bushes and up hills in trees, let's say. They're going to come across... Now this is more of a barricade but let's just i would use this for i mean i could even could even do that but it's been rather something's been ransacked up ahead it mentions there being two horses about and there's items littering the road so hopefully someone goes up to investigate and that's when the goblins attack now usually i would number my enemies like so or you know you can use dice same difference same difference or entirely have the coin be the enemy. That's what I do sometimes when I'm very lazy and not prepped for a, an immediate encounter. But either way, the ones up here are the ranged what two, and the ones by the side of the road are the melee ones. A regular goblin has 2d6, which is 12 health in my game, because I always do full. Across my DM screens, I put the player's yellow cards. I will also make them for the enemies. So quite simple, I would do goblins, AC 15, scimitar plus 4, 5 piercing, average damage, bow, well, it's the same, so you don't even have to put that. Whether they do a bow or a scimitar, same damage. Unless you want to roll, you know, you can roll dice, or you can keep it quick. So the last goblin runs to spare his own life. There is a trail to be discovered running over the hill to their hideout. You may want to say, look, town's not far ahead if you need a rest and come back and follow this trail, or they may be like, I'm on his tail, I'm going to chase him down. Chasing down the goblin and the trail leads to two traps. <laughs> Separate the traps. One's a snare, carry on going. If they're not checking for traps, they're then pit traps they fall into. If your players do go to town to heal up or drop the car off, 
at Barthen's provisions, then Elmina, which is now a woman, Barthen, will say that Lenine Greywind knows about goblin attacks in the area. She's in the Lion Shield Costa. If they capture the goblin, the goblin can eke out some information. This can come at various different points. The leader's called Clag. He's a bugbear, which is a, a higher up the chain goblin. Clag reports to King Grohl, who is leader of something called the Cragmore Band. Clag is up ahead at Cragmore Hideout, and Clag has been told to intercept Gundren Rockseeker and Sildar Hallwinter. Now, if they root among, among the items, they find out that neither Gundren or Sildar are here, but there is a em- an empty map scroll case, and this is what Gundren was so excited about. He probably leaked this big find, something big, was a mine, which is going to make him and his brothers loads of money. Captures Goblin will say, yes, we have a human up ahead in the eating cave, we kidnapped him. Also, they will say, there are some new, strange goblins with elongated heads that sometimes join in these ambushes. They're not here today. These new goblins do act weird. They just cackle and then run away after ambushing people. So if the characters go to Thandalin, we'll look at the village in the next video, presumably they will follow the path to Cragmore Hideout. This is my approximation. So as they approach the, approach the mouth of the cave, there's two feet of water and just beyond these high brushes are now two goblins and a goblin boss. The goblin boss being a little bit more beefy, more hit points. If your players are noisy they might get a surprise attack where your players don't even get a go. Now I'm going to change to a more standard draw map. Here is your map in the book and all I've done is try to recreate it with enemies in because I like to visualise things. So you enter darkness, so your players do, as they walk up here. Now this will probably set the dogs off barking in the kennel area. The wolves, I should say. This will alert two guards, probably from the water room, to come investigate. They can animal handling these dogs, quieten them down, or they will pull at their leashes and attack, or a goblin will, will come along and release them and attack. There is a shortcut up a chimney, which will take you right to Clag himself, his pet wolf Ripper, and two goblin henchmen. The boxes in this room have the seal of Lion Shield Costa on them. I had a new player, early levels, and he, about five hits, he completely missed all the time. I kept hitting. In the end, I crit, and just for funsies, I said, okay, kills you and throws your body on the fire, no comebacks. And I thought it was cool, I never saw that player again. He thought he'd failed D&D, I had failed as a DM. Try not to wipe them out, unless they understand, if they can just roll a new character. So they could have chosen also to carry on upstream. Beware of the lights, the noise, because there's a goblin up ahead on a bridge. He's on patrol, so you can have him either there or not. They might see a torchlight. There's a steep, very steep embankment to climb with a snake in it. But before we get to practically the end game where Sildar is, let's consider if this goblin on the bridge is alerted. One damn wall will be broken and the water will flush players all the way down here. They re-enter. Second wall is smashed and water empties again. Then you've got wolves and goblins if there's any alive. Finally, a bunch of goblins, a second-in-command goblin boss, and Yemik, the goblin boss for real, and Sildar on one health. Yemik will take one health point Sildar over to a high edge, threaten to throw him off, which will kill Sildar. Alright, so Sildar can be healed, you know, revived by healing if he's not failed all death saves. Or you just allow it, hand wave it. He has some information. It's in the book, page 23. The strange goblins. The mysterious man called Spider, if it is a man. Wave Echo Cave being the great gold mine, as it were, that's been found. He mentions Sildar investigating a wizard who is missing called Ayano Albrecht. And realistically, finding any treasure, and there is treasure, it's in the book, 
You can replace that treasure. You know, if they're beaten and bruised, throw in more health potions. Have the goblins carry health potions. Look at the stat blocks and see what they're carrying and make sure you say, look, they drop their scimitar and a bow if you want that. If it's arrows, if you want. Ultimately, Sildar would appreciate and pay 50 gold for you to get him safely back to Vandalin. And if you're still with me and you want to look at some more things, let's go. So, remember it gets dark. Think about how noisy their characters are being on this part. There's some dogs barking. Uh, you can scramble up this chimney, but there is quite a big fight up here. Um, don't underestimate goblins either. Uh, in, in packs, they can be quite... They're all good, can be in trouble. I like the idea of this guy walking backwards and forwards, maybe holding a torch, maybe not. But um, yeah, come in here, potentially rescue Sildar and, and enjoy it. So on this stat block, it's AC 15. You can always do average health points and you can ignore the brackets. Bear in mind that goblins can burn an action to disengage from the party. It may be a good idea to throw in one that's the one that's going to run away is much more disengage, hide, you know, it's more interesting. If that's too much for you to handle at this moment, then just do them all exactly the same. This goblin boss is, has got a shield, so that's why he's got a plus two from the original goblin, a 17. 66, 36 health. These are potentially quite a formidable four. They make two attacks with their scimitars. The second, attack, the second attack rolls with disadvantage. A reaction, two goblins swap places and the chosen goblin becomes the target instead. He has meat shields, that is cool. The Hobgoblin has AC of 18. Look, he also has a shield. 18 health at full, but he can deal an extra 2d6 damage if he's next to a mate of his. If he's got a shield out, you would probably say that he can only use his one-handed attack. Uh, if he uses two hands, you probably would say that he'd put his shield away, maybe. Or you can ignore it completely and just say, ah, he hits you with two hands and he's got a shield. It's all about having fun, everyone having fun. Do not underestimate the power of wolves. Those three wolves are Ripper with the bugbear, 18 full health, 40 foot speed, and pack tactics, so multiple wolves each other side all get advantage on the attacks. It is devastating to level one players. You're really gonna have to watch to not absolutely total party kill your little players. They have to get to do this. Unless you don't want to listen, you know, it's always an option. I would cater more to the experience than trying to kill everybody. Subscribe if you want more quite simple explanations of games. I'm thinking about doing Curse of Strad after this series. Comment anything you like, get involved, join the Facebook group in the details, and I hope you really enjoy the game. See you later. <laughs>